Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordant. We are back for some more Rogue Trader. We have finished, I believe, the area of the drifting, drifting Void Ship. We fought this Forge Fiend here and some Servitors and Vox Skulls. Wasn't too bad. Was not too bad of a fight. And now we're gonna investigate the guy with Lord Warp. The premonition runs true. Did you succeed? Yes, thank you. The empty shell of a demon engine. It was this creation, a horrifying mix of real space technologies and the deranged powers of the warp, that disrupted the ship's systems and twisted the tech priest's minds. Alright. I was kind of hoping for something else, like some, some items or stuff. And what we got was a Diagnoster, plus 15 Medicaid, which I suppose I could give to... I don't like Idira, for instance. Okay. Uh, we had the Marksman Rifle, which I think is worse than what we have. Yeah, it, the Rebel Sniper Rifle is better. My Long Glass is better because of the additional hit chance. And Cassia has a Sniper Rifle, 12 to 16, 10, 30. I th I'm gonna swap just because it's more damage, even though I don't really see myself using it. I prefer the one I have on um, Abelard. Okay, so I feel like we're gonna go. Plus 15 to Commerce, I don't think it makes much of a difference for anybody here. Right, this gives you protection from criticals. This gives you hit and crit. Mine is good. Hers is good. What do you have? All targets of Taunting Scream suffer a penalty to their willpower test against ability. Yeah, I like this. Okay, let's get going. But before we go, I'm going to give this to, Pusk, uh, to Abelard. I keep forgetting that they don't have medkits and then I suffer for it. Let me just see if anybody else needs a med kit here. Okay, you can't use it. She has one. You have one. Can't use, can't use. Okay. Let's get out. Oh. And I really, I cannot open this. This is upsetting me. New challenge for me. Wait, somebody's going around. Where are you going? Yeah, it, it feels like there's a perception check right here, and we failed it. Yeah, okay, so I think we're gonna have to come back here at a later point. If I don't forget about it, which I will likely forget about it. Yeah, I'm still very far away from a new level up. I will try to remember. Now, I think... We are going to go back to footfall because we have the quest to turn in for the 10 scan planets which is over here in the furibunda system and this is two travels this is just one travel so let's war travel there it's unsafe okay still fine visit footfall And where is it? I, I forget. Ah, void, void, void dock. Okay. So I will just pause the video for the loading screen and I'll be right back. And here we are. So Mr. Opticon is over Victory here. Victory awaits. Show the data slate. I have collected planetary data that may interest you. With the Nice. With a respectful nod, the tech priest takes the data slate. The collected data is of interest, significant, compliant, with the criteria for cooperation. The Cognizance fleet thanks you for your contribution and guarantees the provision of a reciprocal uh, service indulgence in the form of parts and equipment. Reporting. The Kappa Thread supply line is ready to continue cooperation with the Von Valensis dynasty in the sphere of planetary reconnaissance. Awesome. So... We can now purchase a Retobi Pattern Plasma Pistol. Don't really think I'm going to use it, but not too bad. 
and Combat Manipulator. Whenever the wearer uses a non-attacking consumable item, like a stimulant or a medkit, it counts as an attack of a different... Oh, for the purposes of versatility. That's actually interesting. Uh, I'm not seeing myself doing that a lot, but... Reload costs minus 1 AP, that's good. This would be a good weapon for... Ab um, for Pascal, maybe? Although the rate of fire is only 4. Yeah, I think for now we're going to keep this as is. The I cannot get this anyway, so... Okay, so oh, let's get out of here. Stars. And... I think we're basically just exploring, right? Oh, what is this? Inspect the fuel lever on the ship's bridge. One of the ship's fuel levers in the port state inspected and diagnosed the problem. What is this? I I completely about forgot time. about that. I don't even know where I got that. I think maybe somebody reported it to me while we were doing traveling around the systems. And I just completely forgot. Hmm. I don't know where it is though. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to explore the bridge and try to find what? A way down? How how do I do this? Does it show? <coughs> Bless you, Cordampina. Master Helmsman. No, what? It, it, it says on the ship's bridge. Okay, so there's gotta be a fuel lever somewhere. We have to speak with... Uh, uh. Wait, what is this? Activate the control panel. Fuel system analysis in progress. Status, diagnosing. Result, no failures detected. And I couldn't read the last part. And I think I broke the cogitator. <laughs> People are panicking. Fix it. Bless it. Sprinkle it with holy water. Uh. What? Calibrate the ship's Vox system. The ship's Vox system is in need of thorough calibration. Meet with Vox master on the bridge to discuss the matter. <clears throat> this one I know where it is. Good. Where is Vox master? He should be here. When you approach, Vigdis pulls away from fine-tuning another Vox and Bowser head. Lord Captain, the ship informed me of our imminent meeting. Oh, I have to talk to him, or her. My personal log states that the ship's Vox system is malfunctioning. Can you explain? Lord Captain, the Vox Master is caught off guard by your question. It takes it a moment to find the words. The Vox system is functioning as expected, and no communication problems have been reported by any of the crew. Please allow me to check the system's calibration settings in your presence to alleviate any concerns you may have about its performance. The Voxmaster thin fingers dart between hundreds of wires and cables on the control panel. Flipping switches and turning dials, she issues commands and methodically checks the lines of communication with the crew on every deck. At last, accompanied by the sound of static, the crackling of the Vox and the flickering of signaling lights, the dance of her hands concludes. All finished, Lord Captain. No issues detected. The system is working as expected. She studies your face as she awaits your response. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you for your service, Mr. Stolliman. Or Captain, she offers an unusually deep bow, likely using it to mask her confusion. Okay, so something strange is happening. Am I getting deceived? Visit the forgotten twin star system. Okay, I, I, I don't know where I got this quest. Well, since we're here, let's just talk to her. Remind me who you are. Vox Master Octavus Vigdis Suri Ota of the Toliman Dynasty, the current Vox Master serving aboard your vessel. In accordance with the Seneschal's orders, I assume this duty immediately upon the demise of the esteemed Vox Master Septimus, who was my grandfather. What are the Vox Master's duties? I am the ears and the voice of this void ship. 
I supervise several dozen officers and three times that number of support personnel. We receive, send, encrypt and decode all incoming and outgoing messages through the ship's internal and external channels. And we also ensure clean communications and the optimal efficiency of the crew's Vox casters. If you ever want to know what worries and concerns your crew are harboring, what your subjects are whispering about in local networks after their watches, and what their leaders are clamoring about over shortwave Vox transmissions, just come and see me. I will satisfy your curiosity. And have the Vox spirits brought you anything of interest lately? You may be interested to know that a group of officers were discussing a grim rumor over lunch. Word has it the apparition of Lord Captain Theodora has been sighted on board lately. Yes, you heard right. They say she is haunting the decks, dragging wayward crew members off into oblivion. This quiet has spread throughout the ship, as the anomaly has been reported in different sections, sometimes entire kilometers apart. The Vox Master leans closer to you. Master Heinrichs van Kellogg's expressed interest in our communication stations and Vox nets a short while ago. The interrogator appears to be very well versed in the matters of sacred technology, and it worries me. A man of his knowledge and his line of work is capable of discreetly planting his own devices in our systems. We will be vigilant, Lord Captain, but you should try to be more careful as well. Yeah, so he might be spying on us. Why do you look so strange? My appearance comes from my heritage, generation after generation of people who spent their entire lives in the depths of this void ship. Neither we nor our ancestors have ever left our home, but the same can be said about many denizens of the Imperium's million worlds. We are used to the silence of the cosmos and the voices of the ship. There are thousands of us, but we delve far from the Lord Captain's upper decks and remain unseen. We are the Voidborn. I am also Voidborn. Uh, where does the word Voidborn come from? Because we are the children born in the void between the stars, be it the womb of a traveling vessel, an orbital satellite, or a forgotten asteroid station. Low gravity, voyages through the warp, and the countless dangers of space travel, everything others hate and dread is second nature to us. Tell me about the lives of the Voidborn and my crew. To us, the groans, creaks and murmurs of the ship sound the way... Uh, of the ship sound the way babbling brooks and singing birds to do to world dwellers. Ah, okay. We hear the ship breathe, know what it is feeling and thinking. We are a part of the ship just like it is a part of us. We perform numerous functions and there are many officers among our number. Some maintain order and prevent mutiny, others serve as shepherds and support the crew, and some devote themselves to mending the body and spirit of the vessel. Most of the Voidborn are members of large void ship dynasties that bear responsibility for a certain aspect of the ship's life. For 300 years, the main branch of the Ptolemon dynasty has produced the ship's Vox Masters, and most of our subordinates come from the cadet houses of the dynasty. And how do you find life on the ship? Life has been quite generous to me, Lord Captain. I am the Vox Master, and only the best in the dynasty can become one. By virtue of my skills and position, no one has ever denied me anything. Our family claims a spacious section for its domain. The main? The main. I also enjoy long walks through the narrow and dimly lit corridors of the ship, listening to the sounds of her activity, falling asleep and waking up to the chanting of hymns. And admiring the stars beyond, of course. How do the others on the ship treat you? We look, speak and move differently from the inhabitants of the planetary worlds. Our way of life, traditions and quirks frighten these people just like the darkness of the cosmos. Many believe us to be the bringers of ill fortune and alas, it is the Voidborn who get the blame for terrible warp phenomena during Lord, uh, longer voyages. Victus hesitates before continuing. Several years ago, an unfortunate warp jump caused all the food on board to spoil. Fifteen days later, a hungry and furious crew nearly massacred everyone on the lower decks, blaming us for the misfortune and hoping to restock the larders with our flesh. Ugh. I would have been killed during the mutiny had Edith at last not shown up in the right place at the right time. She came to my rescue and the scoundrel's fear of her was even greater than their fear of the Voidborn. Good job, Edira. Looks like you are close friends with Edira. Webs of tiny wrinkles appear at the corners of Vigdi's eyes, the only hint that the Vox Master is smiling. The Voidborn seldom make friends, especially among the captain's entourage. But you see, many consider Edira to be different. I am different too. We have spent plenty of time in each other's company discussing regicide over a glass of Amasek. Except Edira changed after one incident, and we started to drift apart. The death of Lord Captain Theodora made her withdraw even more. I do not know if Edira considers me her friend now, but we used to be very, very close. It is good I can still look after her in my own way. 
Oh, perception test succeeded. Interpreting the Vox Master's emotions based on half a face and a Vox modulated voice is no easy task, but you manage to catch the undercurrent in Vigdi's words. The Vox Master is not merely saddened by a rift with Idira, she is devastated by it. So, how much? Oh, okay, actually, easy. Have you ever left a ship? Oh, I did once, and it was dreadful. It felt like the massive blue dome overhead could shatter at any moment and fall, and my bones would be crushed by the gravity. Vigdis twitches her shoulders, trying to ward off the flood of memories. The ship is my home, Lord Captain, and I would not trade it even for, a bount for the bounty of a hundred worlds. I see. Let us return to business. And our dialogue with Voxmaster Vigdis is concluded. Alright, so let's, I guess, continue exploring. Where are we going now? We will be going... Okay, there is no route here yet. If I go back over here, it's still an orange route to go over there. <clears throat> so I think I'm gonna make it less dangerous for us. Make it unsafe by using one of our navigators inside. And travel over there. Permission to report, Lord Captain, says Vox Master Victis. I keep receiving messages about strange behaviors in certain ship systems. All decks report the uncontrollable opening and closing of doors, gates, and airlocks. They behave erratically and do not obey the operator's commands. Regrettably, this has led to casualties among the crew. The tech priests have explained that these phenomena are being caused by the machine spirit's irascibility and have spent hours chanting litanies to soothe their anger. Unfortunately, many crew members were badly injured before the prayers could stabilize the systems. I don't... Is, is this a result of the unsafe travel or is it just something that always happens? Hmm. Okay, so we found a dangerous route over to the cradle of Kepri. Palladium Stellos... Oh, Forgotten Twins. We do have a quest to go there. But given that we're right here... I think I'm going to explore these first. Is this Janus? Oh, maybe Janus is in this system. Ah. Okay. Let's start by traveling here. Oh. I completely forgot to explore this area. <laughs> Lord Captain, I hasten to report the disturbing news brought to me by the machine spirits of the ship. The matter is extremely delicate and concerns Lady Cassia. You see, since her first day aboard, her presence has been a disturbance to the crew's way of life. If you'll allow, I have prepared a detailed report. Delivery your report. The first incident occurred immediately after our departure from Iraq 5. The Lady Navigator chastised one of the ship's runners, after which he went to his living quarters, killed his family and then shot himself. Okay. So we're gonna have to talk to Cassia. The second incident was noted while traversing the warp. The Lady Navigator gave the pilots the wrong instructions and the Void Ship was thrown off course. For a matter of minutes, but this was enough for the forces of the Immaterium to anger the machine spirits, enough for them to start a fire in the service bay. After that, officers living near the Lady Navigator's quarters began to express extreme emotions. Hysteria, apathy, euphoria, rage. This is quite detrimental to crew morale and performance. The last incident was recorded on footfall. Around a hundred living birds were delivered on board during our stay on footfall. Each bird cost a hefty sum, but I have failed to discover their purpose and subsequent fate. I was also told about a conflict between the Lady Navigator and the Seneschal. Alas, with no details. If you like, you can ask Master Wersarian directly. Things are even worse with Jai Hidari. I intercepted a Vox cast in which she promised she would, and I quote, in that Kasha, if she ever saw it again. Uh, no she won't. If I may, Lord Captain, the Lady Navigator's state of mind worries me. She is self-contained and does not mesh with the crew at all, which is why everyone avoids her. Even senior officers can be superstitious. I fear that only you are in a position to talk to her on an equal footing and improve the situation. For the sake of the crew's safety and that of Lady Cassia herself. Okay, so we're gonna talk to her after charting a new course here. Yeah, I forgot to explore this system. <laughs> Um, so if I want to go to the ship, back to the bridge, we're going to talk to 
the Seneschal first to try and understand what's happening. And then we're going to confront Cassia. Because I don't like my crew members getting killed and killing their families because of her influence. Lord Captain. Abelard greets you with the customary courtesy, but makes sure to scan you from head to toe with his scrutinizing gaze. Okay, let's start with this one. I heard I hear you and Cassia exchanged words recently. What happened? And who brought this piece of news to you, I wonder? <sighs> then again, I have nothing to hide from you. Of late, the helmsmen have been going off course with increasing frequency, and the reports are full of contradicting accounts. The problem continued, even after several demotions were handed out, so I took it upon myself to investigate. I was astonished to learn that our Lady Navigator has been amending entries in the ship's log, and the officers have been keeping silent on her orders. Mm. I immediately demanded an end to the outrageous conduct and I reprimanded Lady Cassia in front of the officers. She greeted my words with silence, and then quickly departed. <sighs> I should not have acted thus. I never even found out what drove her to do it. She's manipulating the ship's log? The hell? Uh, I have also discovered that there are caches left by Theodora somewhere on Dargonas and Kavagama. Do you know anything about this? It is wise for a rogue trader to have caches where they can safely store important information. And utterly unwise to share the coordinates of such caches with anyone. Even one's most trusted associates. Okay, so we don't know where they are. I'm afraid I do not know how to find the caches, but I can offer some help. Your predecessor used this numeric code to deactivate certain defense systems in her service. If I know Lady Theodora as well as I think, then I'm quite certain that she left her caches well guarded. In that case, this code will be useful to you. Okay, can you tell me the code? Oh, he hands out the text like to you. <clears throat> ah, it, okay. It doesn't actually show, but I'm guessing it's gonna complete some kind of quest later on. Okay, eight shots. <clears throat> I'm still going to give uh, the Ripper here a try. Okay, let's check with Jay what's happening between her and Cassia. May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little dog, Sherim? I heard you have a falling out with Cassia. We even threatened to kill her. So, Vig Dis is snooping in on my Vox line. I wasn't threatening your navigator. I didn't even think about it. I was just relaxing in the good company of fragrant Amasak, sweet-scented Laho, and a handful of new friends from the upper decks. And right in the middle of the fun, the lady navigator swoops in and starts jabbering about how her head is about to split from the cacophony of colors mm -hmm. coming from our cabin. Long story short, Sherin, I had the misfortune of getting a taste of what your officers have been going on about. They say when the Orselio girl becomes upset, everyone in the vicinity loses their minds and is overtaken by Aji. And it hurt like anything. I can only remember everyone huddling in a corner, wailing like klaxons. As for Cassia, I think Cassia was flustered by the state of our clothes, which were very meager back then, as uh -huh. you understand. Before I could get my bearings, <clears throat> the porting was gone. The whole situation was awkward. As for the threats, they were addressed to one of the girls I'd been foolish enough to invite to our little party. That Kasra used the confusion to pilfer a full pouch of the Laho from under my nose. Are these drugs? A common form of recreational stimulant that consists of a rolled paper stuffed with a plant-derived de substance. When lit, this substance emits smoke that is inhaled through the tube. Okay. <laughs> I will speak to her later. Oh. Because we still have to talk to Cassia. And I don't want to get, like, all of the dialogue just yet. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. I have heard rumors that you are not getting along with well with the crew. Panic flashes in her ruby red eyes, and your heart starts beating a little faster while your hands go cold. So this is the influence, I imagine. Not here. I'm begging you. Aunt 
nobleman supposed to discuss such things away from the servants? This might be a quest because it's sending her to my study. Okay, let us go to my study. No one will disturb us there. Then lead the way, and I will answer all of your questions. Cool. What is it you wanted to talk about, Lord Captain? I have nothing to say to your unfounded accusations about my conflict with the crew. I cannot recall my having a single quarrel with any of your people during my entire time aboard. Yeah, that's a lie, right? There's a lot of options. You have been willfully changing entries in the ship's logbook and forbidding officers from reporting to it to Abelard. I beg to differ. I read numerous books on Astra Nataris and can swear on House Orcelius' honor that your officers are entering data in complete contravention of regulation. False terms, random distances between lines, spelling mistakes in even the simplest of words. I have spent the last few cycles correcting the latest log entries and I thought it would please Master Abelard, as he is so fond of order. Hmm. And yet the Seneschal did not appreciate my efforts and for some reason called him an outrage. Even though mere days after he had been swaddling me in warm yellow words. I noticed all your people do this when they are expressing sympathy. I merely wanted to repay the Seneschal with the same courtesy. Perhaps he finds my friendliness off-putting. Okay, I hope she's telling the truth. You must have had quite a falling out with Jay if she's threatening to kill you. Now, we know this is a lie, right? Well, maybe Jay is lying? Cassia's ruby eyes become round and an unbidden flush suffuses her pale face with a rosy tint. We didn't. I didn't. That is our private business. The issue was between me and Lady J. Lord Captain, please pay it no heed. We made our peace long ago, and I will have you know no one threatened me. Your information is incorrect. The messenger you rebuked, uh, rebuked, butcher, uh, damn it. The messenger you rebuked butchered its own family and then killed himself. I haven't rebooked a single errand boy on this ship. Cassia ponders this for a moment. Ah, I think I remember. A kind young man with a shy smile and skillful fingers with too much rotten ochre on his shoulders. I grew tired of the disgusting colors and advised him to lighten his burden by casting the weight off his shoulders. He did not come the next day or ever again. Hmm. During the warp voyage you gave the wrong orders which led to the vessel shifting off course and the service bay being destroyed. I saw something in the warp, something vast, predatory, shimmering with indescribable colors. It came from nowhere and stared at the ship with hundreds of hungry eyes right there in our path. I decided to change the course while it was still possible, but, it, but did not want to sow panic. Would it have been better to tell the crew we were heading straight into a monster's gaping maw? Hmm. The officers are reluctant to be quartered next to your chambers because of the constant emotional outbursts it causes them. Some even maim themselves and others. I already told you I cannot control my abilities. What else do you want from me? Will I be assigned the pariah chaperone? Or will you put me in suppressing shackles? Well, would you mind telling me why you needed 100 species of birds and why you use, what you used them for? Admittedly, I am at a loss myself. The day we arrived on footfall, I sent a request to the ship's quartermaster and asked him to get me a songbird. But he never asked for clarification, and shortly before we left I had a countless number of cages delivered to me, all wrapped in bright red, red panic with flickering tints of fear. There was a bird in every one. I was so excited, I thought I would have a hundred friends instead of just one. They were squeaking so piteously, I let the poor things out. I even fed them my breakfast and dinner. But the stupid birds would not stop chittering even after bedtime. They were dashing about the room, smacking me in the face with their wings and defecating. I became angry and suddenly they started pecking at each other's eyes and attacking me. Then I became afraid and they fell over dead. I do not think I want to keep pets anymore. I think it's best if you don't. I think I've heard enough. Will you share your thoughts with me? Okay, so I don't think she's a monster. Well, she's a bit, but... <laughs> You have a kind soul, but I have difficulty reaching out to people. I could teach you the art of communication if you like. I like this. You have done terrible things. Woes, dog your steps, but we will find a way to defeat them. Everyone who has their slander. Okay. Yeah, let's go for I can teach you the art of communication if you like. That would be wonderful. My education on Iraq 5 was cut short, but I had realized by then that the wisdom of books is a poor substitute for the wisdom of experience. Very well. 
Since we are done with this misunderstanding, I would like to change the subject. It would only be fair for me to ask you a few questions now, wouldn't it? Cassia hesitates and continues in a less confident tone. Do not... Uh, less confident tone. Do not mistake me. I am not going to accuse you of anything. It's just that you are the most worthy interlo interlocutor... Uh, interlocutor... On the entire ship. And you are always so busy. What would you like to ask? I read a treatise by Paisius de Mobius very recently, who claimed that subjects would never believe their new ruler was better than the old one, unless the old one had been a tyrant. No matter the circumstances, the low-born rebel become deluded about their prospects and rebel in favor of their base desires. What do you make of that? Okay, so we have... Several options here. So, Lord Imperium. Your interpretation of this classical text is not entirely correct. If the subjects have grown accustomed to the ruling house, all the sovereign must do is refrain from breaching long-standing traditions. Adjust unwanted laws as gradually as you would shift the bed of a flooded river, and no one will ever take your power from you. Okay, makes sense. As for commerce, on the contrary, the loyalty of subjects can be bought to pittance. Lower the tax, throw them a festival, or feed the needy. A gracious gesture once every cycle will exalt you in the eyes of the rabble as if it were his own, uh, his own best blessing. Yeah, this is a little bit evil in my mind. We can persuade her. Oh, it, was, it has always been my opinion that subjects expect two things from their sovereign. To abuse power and to bless their babies. Succeeded both and boring essays become unnecessary. Okay, let's go with uh, Imperium here. Cassia thinks for a moment and then smiles. Indeed, I was not wrong about your merits or your ability to hold a conversation. I hope my second question does not confound you either. According to the 20 tomes penned by the preacher Oistak Istafan, the Forgotten, mercy and cruelty go through the world hand in hand, but people flock only to one pan of the scales. Would you rather inspire fear in your followers or be magnanimous and choose awe? I think I would prefer to choose awe. <laughs> so we have coercion. I'm not afraid of acquiring reputation for ruthlessness. I would rather crush a rebellion and condone one. Is that not a greater mercy in the end? Persuasion. I will exercise restraint and leniency in my actions. Excessive suspicion and mistrust harden the hearts of the people and turn them against each other. We have fellowship. One must be a tyrant, a friend and a jester to one's subjects. What matters is that to clearly discern which role is required at a given moment. I will actually just go for the one that gives me the best chance to win. This is not wrong, although this would be the more iconoclast one. But let's go for Fellowship. And we succeeded, nice. There is so much power in your words. Power that makes me want to join you. I understand now why your subjects are eager to follow you. I admit I was afraid we were too different. And yet, you helped me realize that I can be candid with you. Please do continue. I must confess that sometimes I can hardly bear the burden the house has placed upon me. I feel I am not doing my best. Tell me how you, heir to a protectorate, can bear the responsibility for billions of lives day after day and not stoop under all the weight. Okay, so it's not always easy, but I try to lead the dynasty toward prosperity by worthy means. It is my duty whether I like it or not. This inner turmoil is clouding your mind. My protectorate, my subject, my title are mere resources that I am using solely for my own ends. No, let's go for this one. Thank you for your patience, Cordant. You are helping me to see the world in different colors. A novel experience for me. Our conversations hold a special place in my heart. Allow me to bid you farewell for now. I am heading back to my chambers to consider today's conversation. Okay. Man, there's just... So much... You cannot escape dialogue in this game. If you don't like dialogue... <laughs> you're gonna have a tough time here. But I do like it, so... Uh, let's keep going. Uh, in terms of quests, remains the same. Let us explore the system we are currently on. Which is Omicron. What do you have for me, Omicron? We have Space Dust. We got three fuel trophies, apparently. We're gonna explore a new planet. Savannah World. Magnetic Storm. 
The magnetic storm raging above the planet blurs the gaze of Augur arrays. Only truly powerful diviner machines may see through the currents of magnetic fluctuations in their blessed vigil and discover the mysteries of this emperor forsaken planet. The rogue trader has decided to leave this unwelcoming world. Maybe he will return here one day. Interesting. <clears throat> so this is... Oh, I'm going to write this down, sorry. Otherwise I'm going to forget to explore these places. So in Omicron, we have the Savannah world. And this requires what? Sorry. Requires truly powerful diviner machines. Okay, so diviner machines. Maybe it's some kind of upgrade we can do to our ship. Okay. Let's go over there. I do like exploring the planets. <clears throat> it's always a surprise to see what's happening here. The ruins of an ancient imperial city were discovered on a dead world completely deprived of an ecosystem. According to the reports, the entire settlement is contained in a titanic glass dome that once held an artificial atmosphere. Your augurs detected the framework of three other similar structures that were never completed. For whatever reason, the dome systems failed and left behind this, uh, and left behind this city a ghost that never managed to become a proper colony of the Imperium. Okay, well, we can start with this one. Send out a crew to explore the city's temple district. Oh, we got two times holy gifts. Blessed bolter casing. Oh, an item as well. The temple district is situated at the heart of the city. The god emperor's statue, intricately carved from precious crystal, is suspended beneath the dome, supported by chains of gold and can be seen from anywhere in the colony. Inspired by the majestic sight, the expedition members set off to explore the area with renewed vigor. Soon enough, they stumbled upon an ancient weapon lying on a pedestal wreathed in sunlight. The expedition brought it back to the ship and told many tales about how the Emperor himself, who had been watching them from above, had directed their attention to the sacred relic. Uh, let's explore the local palace. Whoa. A ghost sword, the power of swords. Ah, uh, but it's Aldar. <gasps> Profit factor. Aldari weapon proficiency. A lavishly decorated estate of the, rule of the local ruler towers over rows of featureless bunkhouses. Several explorers perished from the cleverly hidden tripwires in the courtyard, damn it, but after losing their companions, the team easily disarmed the remaining traps in the estate. Anything of value has been promptly delivered to the rogue trader's vessel. The Lord Captain was even given an exquisite sword found in a secret cache that once belonged to the mansion's owner. Let's order the scouts to gather as many supplies as possible. Nice. Your people flooded the city like a tidal wave, filled buildings after building, bunkhouse after bunkhouse, and receded from its quiet streets just as quickly. There were plenty of useful things among their findings, including foodstuffs and weapons. So we got provisions, mechanicus creations, ranged weaponry, and a uniform kit. And let's also drain the remaining fuel from generic substations, the city won't need them anymore. Okay. It takes several trips to deliver the massive Prometheum storage tanks to your vessel. The crew grimly points out the colony was running out of fuel. Had the life support systems not failed prematurely, the locals would still have perished due to lack of energy. Let's leave this city. Okay. Well, this was a very worthy place to explore. Also looks like a dead world. It's a mining world. This one also has plus steel. But I only need Xenotech and Prometheum. So, nay. Because I only have two, right? The problem is, am I going to remember to come back here and, and mine this? I hope I do. Maybe I should just be using the Extractiums instead of trying to save them. Well, let's go back to Trinitus, because I forgot to come here before. 
Lord Captain, I bring dire news. A feud has broken out between the clans that maintain the Void Shield arrays. Rumor has it that the late Lady Theodora was seen on the lower decks, and so one of the families called for a rebellion against the Usurper on the Void Ship. That is, you. So far, no one believes their mad tales, but unrest has begun at the furnace of the compartments. The ships and forces are ready to eliminate the instigating clan or pacify the entire Void Shield crew. The decision is yours. Yeah, find the source of the rumors and punish those responsible. I don't want any, any unnecessary deaths. Lord Captain, as Seneschal Wurserin would say, there are no innocents in such cases. The clans are endangering the entire void ship, tussling over a strange and obviously false rumor. If you so desire, I will convey your wishes to the enforcers later, but right now the unrest must be stopped and the people return to their direct duties or replaced. My wishes, Vox Master, are for the enforcers to sort out the situation before we forfeit the crew wholesale, investigate the rumors and find the real culprits and no violence. Okay, destroy them, pacify them. I'm, I'm gonna go for this again. No violence. I'll see to it, Lord Captain. Okay. I'm guessing we're gonna have we're gonna have one of these events like every time we travel. Or at least it seems like it. I have been here. Yeah, there's no question mark. Okay. Trinitos, what do you have? I want Prome Ugh. I want Prometheum. Let's avoid these for now. Just experience. Burning World, also just experience. Well, I guess I'll fight them after this. <clears throat> More Plasteel. A natural accumulation of irregularities on a solid planetary surface has been detected. Probability of occurrence of natural resources, high. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to use one of my extractums here because this one has 7 Plasteel, while the, other, while the others ones only had 2. So yeah, sure, take one. And let's quick save and fight these ships here. And let's see if we can make it. Come on. I'll be your beacon in the darkness. Whoa. That was quick. We are vulnerable. Yeah, that is not good at all. Iconoclast class destroyer. Whoa, dude. These guys shoot from very far away. And there's three of them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna die here, right? I know this tremor. Our shields are weakening. Yeah, this is this is not great. This is not great at all. Okay, I, I think I'm going to try to get behind them. Though I will deploy my torpedoes here. Annihilate them. What? No, let me see. If I go dorsal, I can shoot him. If I go starboard, I can shoot him. Okay, so I think I'll do this. It's still hitting over there? How? Okay, I think this is bugged. It, it should be targeting these shields, not these ones here. What the hell is going on? Okay. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Let's use our dorsal shots as well. And yeah, it, it is targeting this shield here. Macro cannons, volley! Okay, good. And... 
I don't think I'm gonna be able to use my lance weapon. Unless I did this. Which feels like a mistake to me. Do I want to just go beside him? Go behind him, I mean. And I feel vulnerable. I don't like it. Okay. I think I'll try to come over here, shoot him, and then try to still move. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to move that far. But I will try, I suppose. Fire the lance batteries. Okay. Yeah, I can still move over there. So if I go... So if I go here... <clears throat> okay, not too bad. Onward. And we are going to restart our shields. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that this will restore the ones that were broken. Yeah, this is horrible. I think we're dead. The void comes knocking. Here we are shielded. Yeah, this guy will kill us. Okay. Well, this void ship battle is not easy. They they break the shields immediately and deal like half my ship's HP. Oh, okay. I'll try it again, but... Okay, at least this time they didn't break my shield right away. Still not a great position. What is the other one? Over there. The machine spirit of the void shield array no longer protects us. Never mind what I said. It's it's essentially the same exact scenario, isn't it? I think it is. Set the course. Okay. Not sure if I can do anything different. Right now! Man, my weapons suck. I will deploy torpedoes over there. And I'm gonna move. I'm I'm doing the same thing. Them. I guess this time I'm gonna try and go over here. But if I go over here, I'm I'm wasting my my port attack. But at least I will be giving my back shield instead of this shield to the guys over there. Yeah, okay, so let's go here then. Time has come. <clears throat> Ignore this attack and restart our shields. And pass the turn. Yeah. Dude. I... <laughs> I'm not sure this is winnable right now. He's gonna shoot again, isn't he? No? Okay. I want their weapons. Oh, you bitch. That was like one of my only hopes. <laughs> okay, so three torpedoes go for that guy. Okay. I am pleased about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, restarting the shield doesn't recuperate broken shields. Only damaged ones. That's awful. This can't reach him. Nothing reaches him. 
If I just try to run, they're gonna catch up and kill me anyway. And if I go here, my shields will be turning towards them. So I think I have to do this. I could ram and go all the way over there, but there's no real point. Lay in the course. Yeah, it sucks. It's so close. We have to pass. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Ship. I love you, Chauncey. We need to turn the tide. Yeah, I don't think I can. I don't think I can deal with this. I will try the other ship battle, but I feel like it's not destined to be. Or I'm gonna try and explore the planet before we do that. Oh, uh, no, I think I'm, I'm jumping into battle anyway. Enemy contact! All hands make Aldari ready to Aldari Shadow Hunters, fury. two of them. Okay, they're using torpedoes. Enemy torpedoes. The enemy has launched torpedoes. However, you can destroy them before they reach you. Torpedoes are always fired in salvos, and they do not have shields or hull integrity. Every attack that hits a salvo destroys one torpedo per shot. From here on out, you may encounter clusters of small ships that follow the same rules in combat as torpedoes. <clears throat> okay, so... One thing we know about torpedoes is that they kind of have to go a long way forward before they can turn. So if I go over here, I don't think they can actually catch up to me. Now, these bitches have a hollow field. Each attack made by an enemy has an equal chance of targeting either the real ship or one of its project projections. Each time a projection is hit, the hollow field loses one charge. So, essentially mirror image <laughs> is what this is. I will put Torpedo torpedoes over locked. here. And yeah, I'm not going to bother trying to kill them. I'm trying. I'm going to try and dodge them. See if that's possible. So, if I move over here, I can target this guy. So, I will try it. This one's going down. Okay, we missed, but oh, they don't have they don't have shields though. That's a good thing. Okay. So, if I come over here, I can use dorsal attack and port attack. Cannot use starboard though. So what if I go here? Dorsal... No, still not working. No, okay, so just, just, let's just go over here. The time has come. And try to kill this guy. Another salvo! Okay, everything missed, but we broke his mirror images. And now we just pass. <clears throat> yeah, you see, they have to go a long way for... Oh, oh, you bitch. You smart bitch. But yeah, they have to go around a lot. That does a lot of damage. Holy crap. Okay, so this guy is vulnerable. I think I can kill him right now. I mean, if if I'm actually able to target him, which I might not be. Man, I'm still not accustomed to these ship battles. Okay, if I do this, he turns around, doesn't do anything for me. So I will go this way, the torpedoes are facing that way. So I'm still safe from them, and just shoot the guy like this. Fire the lance batteries. He still has a somewhat low hit chance. Okay, well he's almost dead. This guy does not try to retreat like other ships we've fought thus far. And I guess I'm gonna restart my shields. And pass. 
Torpedoes have to go all the way around. They blew up. Bitch broke my shield. Okay. The only way I'm safe from those torpedoes is if I go over there. Okay, and thankfully we can do that. But I think I will die to him. Okay, so first off, if I get over here, I can still shoot this guy. Macro cannons falling! Okay, good. Firing two shots. This fires only a single shot. Yeah, let's try and break mirror images first. Fire right now! Missed everything, wonderful. This one's going down. We hit mirror images, but I think we actually damaged a lot of mirror images, which is good. I can still void ship ram to go further back away from him. But I think I'll just get over here. Now the question is, do I want to leave torpedoes here or there? And I think I'll leave them... There. So that his torpedoes don't kill my torpedoes. Mind games. <laughs> okay. Onward. Wait, no, 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 I said move over... Oh, no. I, th I thought my ship was going to be here, not here. His torpedoes can blow me up now. Oh, uh, God, that's going to suck. Annihilate if it them. works the way I'm thinking it's going to work, we're dead. Oh, okay. Thankfully, he did not decide to blow them up over there. I don't know why. He has a lot of maneuverability. So the torpedoes are going to be a little bit crappy because they have to go around just like his. They are in a good position, however. Oh, come on, dude. Really? Okay. I'm actually thinking about maybe just running away and try to see if I can kill him with torpedoes. And what? Maybe try and face this way? I won't use this now. I have no shield in the front, so I don't want to have my front facing him. I will just try to get away from here, I think. Not the most exciting maneuver, I know. But I'm trying to live. Torpedoes are going around. They're gonna die. He's gonna shoot my... What? Oh, no. Okay. That was a, a very big mistake on your part, wasn't it? Because I can blow up in a one cell radius. This is why I don't understand why he didn't do this on me. And I hope this doesn't hit mirror images. Nope, we just kill him. Okay, cool. Uh, really, I have to fight the... <laughs> okay. Just go over there. Lay they the can't course. reach me. Unleash I think this fight is done, but I'll just deploy sample. torpedoes in case we need to actually... destroy his torpedoes. Okay. I would expect the fight to end uh, without having to deal with the torpedoes. This seems a little bit stupid to me, but sure. The time has come. They will die in two turns anyway. Okay, or one turn. Okay. Fit for the Fon Valencia Well, we leveled up. That's at least something. 
We got trophies, Wraith Bone Fragments, I don't know what that is, and plus 30 scrap. Oh, this is for a level up, I will do this later, I think. We did take a lot of damage doing this. We can repair for 47 scrap, sure. And check out the planet before we finish the episode. The Monastery of the Hoarder of the Hammer. Okay, so actually we just hit the one hour mark. So I will leave this um, Monastery for the next episode. And uh, those ships, I feel like I can only go for them much later. Well, maybe not much later, but later. Because currently we don't really have anything in the way of powerful weapons. Maybe a level up could help us out. We have two available abilities, which are a few. Uh, maybe they will help us out. We'll see. Uh, for now, this will be it, my friends. So, as always, I want to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Rogue Trader. I hope you guys are enjoying it. We had kept the game deathless up to this point. <laughs> it's sad that it happened on a void ship battle. I'm still going to keep track of my deaths in actual combat gameplay. Um, but, well, you know, it happens. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more, many more videos coming out soon. And it is also a free and easy way to support the channel. I hope to see you all in the next episode. And until then, stay safe, everyone.